In this video, we want to look at factoring trinomials. And we want to be careful about the common factor of fail. Now, what the common factor of fail is, is when you have one of your binomial factors that contains a common factor. We shouldn't really have that because the first step, of course, in all factoring problems is to look for your greatest common factor. So let's look at this example. If we look at 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. Now, of course, there's the AC method way for factoring this, but I want us to look at how we can factor using trial and error. And let's be more efficient in the way that we do um, our guessing and checking. Now, when we look at 2x squared, we understand that this is a prime number, so there's only one way that this guy can factor. So this guy must break down as 2x and x. The next thing you want to do is look at the signs here. Since everything is positive, we know that we must use positives here. Now when I look at the 6, I can look at this as 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. And I just need to figure out what's going to be the best option for me. Now, this is where I want us to talk about the common factor of fail symptoms or syndrome. If I use the 1 and the 6, I can put the 1 here and the 6 here. When I check this, though, I get a 1x, and on the outside, I get 12x. 1 and 12 is too large. It's not going to give me 7. It's going to give me 13. So I know this guy doesn't work. So let's try another combination. Well, if I switch around the 1 and the 6, and I put the 6 here, this will not work because 2 and 6 have a common factor of 2. And if there's a common factor here, that means there was a common factor in the original problem. But I don't have that. There is no common factor up here, so I can't have a common factor down here. So I know that the 6 cannot go there. Well, that means I can't use the combination of 1 and 6 at all. So I'm going to cross that guy out. Now I've got the 2 and the 3. Considering the fact that we were just talking about the common factor fail, what can I not put here? The factor that cannot go here is the 2. If I put a 2 here, that would have a common factor with this 2, and it won't work because I would have had it up here as well. So that means I need to put the 2 over here and the 3 here. So let's see if this is going to be the combination that works for me. When I check on the inside, I have a plus 3x. And when I check on the outside, I have a plus 4x. So all together, I get my plus 7x that I was supposed to have. Again, we can save ourselves a lot of time if we watch out for those common factors. And again, when we talk about common factors generically, we're talking about common factors other than one, okay? because everybody has a common factor of one. But that's not going to help me out at all. All right, let's try another example. Suppose I have 6x squared plus 5x minus 6. I first want to list the factors that I have for the lead coefficient and for the constant term. For the lead coefficient, I have 1 and 6, and I have 2 and 3. And also have the same thing for my constant, since that is 6 as well. Well, when I break this down, I've got to figure out how am I going to break this down. I've got a couple of different options here. One option would be to use 1 and 6. Okay, uh, Since I might make a mistake here, let me use a pencil. So if I use the 1 and 6 to get x and 6x, Okay, that's going to give me the 6x squared. I then have to look and see how I break down my negative 6. Well, I need a positive and a negative in order to multiply to get this negative. So let's go ahead and put that down before we forget about what our signs are supposed to be. Now, if I use the 1 and the 6, and keeping in mind that we're trying to watch out for the common factor fail, that means the 6 cannot go here. If the 6 were here, 
these guys would have a common factor of 6, and I don't have that common factor here. So let's try putting the 6 here and the 1 here. Well, on the inside here, that gives me 36x, and on the outside is a negative x, so that doesn't work. Not even close. Okay, that gives me 35x, so that means I've got to try something else. Okay, so let's erase this. And let's try another combination. So the 1 and the 6 didn't work. What about the 2 and the 3? This 6 here really tells us what's going to happen. Can I put the 2 here? No, because these guys have a common factor. Well, what if this were a 3? Uh, again, this, or these two terms would have a common factor here, and I don't have it here. So I'm not even going to try that combination. Well, that means that I just ran through every combination that I could use when breaking down the 6x squared is x times 6x. That means I'm going to have to start over here. That means that x and 6x was not the right combination. So let's try something else. Instead of using 1 and 6, let me use the 2 and the 3. So I have 2x times 3x. I still need to have the positive and negative in order to multiply get the negative 6. Now watch what happens. If I try to break down the 6 using 1 and 6, the 6 has to go somewhere. If I put the 6 here, we have an issue with the 2 because they would have a common factor. If I put the 6 with the 3, they too have a common factor of 3 and that's not going to work out for me. So that means I can't use the 1 and 6 at all. Then I look at the 2 and the 3. I'm about to run out of options, so something better work. If I use the 2 and the 3, can the 2 go with the 2? No, because 2 and 2 would have a common factor of 2. So that means the 2 has to go with the 3 if this is going to work, and the 3 has to go with the 2. When we check on the inside, we get a plus 9x. And when we check the outside pieces of the FOIL method, we have a negative 4x. And altogether, this is going to give me a positive 5x, and that's what I was looking for. So I know that I have the correct factorization here. So we can easily eliminate certain combinations because of this common factor fail principle that we're talking about. Okay. Let's try one last example in this video. All right, so let's try 10x squared minus 29x plus 10. Again, just like in the last problem, we want to list our factors. Okay, For 10, we have 1 and 10. We have 2 and 5. And the same thing for this last guy, 1 and 10, or 2 and 5. So let's see how this guy's going to break down. You notice I went straight to the two sets of parentheses for my binomial factors. That's because there is no common factor here other than 1, which means I cannot have common factors down here other than 1. All right, so let's try to take this 10x squared and break him down as x and 10x and see if that guy works. I've got to multiply to get a positive 10, but I'm going to have to have negatives as well, so I know that both of these signs must be negative. Well, let's look at the 1 and the 10. It's very similar to the last example. Can I put the 10 with the 10? No. So I've got to put the 10 over here, but look, even before I even finish and multiply this out, 10 times 10 is going to give me 100, and a 1, there's no combination with a 101 that's going to give you the 29, so this is totally bogus. So let's get rid of the 10 and the 1 here. If I use the 2 and the 5, can I put the 2 with the 10? No, because the 2 has a common factor with a 10. Well, what if this were 5? Can I put the 5 with the 10? And again, you see, no, these guys have a common factor. A common factor that's present here would also have been present in the original, but it's not. So I know this combination does not work. So 
I tried every combination that I could by breaking down the 10x squared using the 1 and the 10, so that guy is gone. Forget him. So that means that 10x squared, if this guy factors, must factor using the 2x and 5x. Okay. So let's try to use the 1 and the 10 again. Maybe it just didn't work for the first one. Maybe it works now. Can I put the 10 with the 5? No, it has a common factor of 5. Can I put the 10 with the 2? No, because those guys would also have a common factor. So that guy doesn't work at all. That leaves me with 2 and 5. The 2 cannot go with the 2, and it must go over here with the 5. If the 2 is with the 5, the 5 is going to be over here with the 2. And let's see if this works out when I finish checking my work. This gives me a negative 25x on the inside, and then on the outside you get a negative 4x. So altogether, you get your negative 29x. So everything checks out here. So by paying attention and understanding that we should not have common factors within the binomial factors here, it saves us a lot of work and it keeps us from trying combinations that will not work.